Live from the ABC7 Broadcast Center, this is Good Morning Washington on your side. Right now, we are waking up on storm watch this Friday morning. Some of us could see sleet, even some freezing rain, and right during the morning commute. Good morning to you, Washington. I'm Atria Godfrey. And I'm Jumi Olabanji. Yeah, that weather is so important before a nice weekend that's on the way. But let's get right to Jackie Jairs for a check of today's forecast. Jackie? Yeah, get through this morning and it's smooth sailing, right? Right through the weekend, things are looking pretty good overall. There is a winter weather advisory that's in effect until noon today. That does include the D.C. metro area and points to the south. Now, I think we're using extreme caution by issuing this advisory. And I think anything that develops across the region is going to be very spotty and it's going to be very light. But that small threat is out there, so we want to give you a heads up, especially when it times out with the morning commute. So here's our storm scan and notice everything's still well off down to the south. A little bit of moisture trying to make its way across the northern neck right now and across the southern Delmarva. Temperatures here too warm, so it's just the rain. It's this area across southern Maryland, the northern neck that we'll be most concerned about for that potential. Now, as we take a look at temperatures, notice we're 32 degrees in DC. We've also got 32 in Quantico and Fredericksburg, so maybe some bridges and overpasses could get a little slick and then the lower spots in the little valleys where your temperatures are just a little bit cooler. So that's something to keep in mind throughout the day today. We're going to stay cloudy, so there's going to be a very overcast one and our temperature is very, very slow to warm. We're only looking at highs in the upper 30s to near the 40 degree mark. So we'll talk more about what's coming up ahead and that is some much better weather by the weekend. That's from the Belfort Furniture Weather Center in just a few minutes. But right now let's get our latest road condition report. At least the moisture won't get here for maybe another hour or so, Amanda. That's right, Jackie. We will be monitoring that. That could really cause things in the later morning commute to be a little dicey. But right now, things are looking great. No problems on the major interstates. You can see the Beltway moves along quite nicely on the Virginia as well as the Maryland side. If you remember yesterday, 95 picked up early delays with all lanes closed northbound, but they are all open this morning. No incidents or lane closures to report at this time. Moving up 95 into the Springfield interchange, delay free from that point into 395 and toward the 14th Street Bridge. All travel lanes open as well. 66 looking pretty good for this time of the morning with light to moderate traffic coming in from Manassas through Centerville. And then we've got a live shot for you. This is going to show you uh, our current conditions there along the 11th Street Bridge. Now we're monitoring conditions there because we are uh, getting reports that that new lane is opening up today. This morning we had crews there earlier just a little bit after 5 a.m. But it looks like they have cleared at this time and it looks like we'll have more information coming up from one of our reporters live on scene. Atria and Jimmy have more on that. All right. Yeah, Amanda, as you just mentioned, new this morning, that long awaited relief for the morning commute. Yeah, people are so excited about this one. A new flyover ramp just opened, connecting the 11th Street Bridge to the westbound southeast southwest freeway. John Gonzalez there live for us this morning with how it's looking out there. Johnny, good morning. Good morning. The cones for the additional lanes here were removed about half an hour ago, and it is some welcome relief for many, many drivers here in the D.C. area. It's been more than 40 years in the making. D.C.'s two major highways are finally connected, 695 and 295. This year where we are standing is the old span of the 11th Street Bridge, and you can take a look at the condition. Well, it's not great, and this is where traffic was flowing for many months during the construction of this final phase of what has been a major undertaking. Well, this over here to my left, Take a look. This is the new flyover ramp where traffic is flowing this morning. It was opened on time at 5 o'clock this morning, and the new connection for the inbound drivers now connects the new 11th Street Bridge to the Southeast Southwest Freeway and is expected to greatly reduce, if not eliminate, all morning rush hour traffic, not to mention perhaps save your tires. For months, we were driving on the old structurally deficient flyover bridge, and I don't have to tell you, folks, a lot of potholes and uneven surfaces. Well, today, smooth luxury lanes, as you can see, if you will. So no more construction, no more traffic pattern changes. And finally, D.C. is connected the way it was intended to be back in the 70s. Reporting live, John Gonzalez, ABC 7 News. All right, John, thank you very much. Hopefully some happy commuters this morning. 5.33 is your time now and in the day ahead. D.C.'s fire chief will be in the hot seat again. Kenneth Heller B. is scheduled to test 
testify at an oversight hearing before the D.C. Council. Now, his department's latest troubles include several firefighters failing to help a man dying across the street from a firehouse. And in some other D.C. news at 534, the man allegedly at the center of a shadow campaign for D.C. Mayor Vincent Gray may be close to a plea deal. The Washington Post reports this morning D.C. businessman Jeffrey Thompson is in the final stages of talks with federal prosecutors. Thompson is suspected of illegally funneling hundreds of thousands of dollars to Gray during his successful 2010 mayoral bid. Gray says he was not aware of the shadow campaign and says he did nothing wrong. Well, I actually don't know anything about it, gentlemen. I guess we could speculate about it, but I really don't know anything about it. Gray is seeking re-election. He leads in the polls as the April 1st primary approaches. Well, what could be the motive for murder? We are now getting a look inside the mind of the killer who could be responsible for three high profile cases in Alexandria, all of them unsolved. Brian Carter live in Alexandria for us this morning with the news that came out yesterday, Brian, that was unsettling to say the least. Absolutely. We're here in the Delray neighborhood along Mount Burton Avenue, a place where so many people gather a lot of comings and goings, a lot of restaurants and shops, and now for some a lot of concern as well. Now this comes after the Alexandria police chief announced yesterday during a press conference that the Nancy Dunning, Ron Kirby and Ruth Ann Ladano's deaths may possibly be linked. Now police say that the three shootings that span a decade are similar in nature. The police chief also said new forensic evidence shows Shows, there's the possibility the same weapon may have been used. Police say at this point they are not ruling anything out. Now this has many asking new questions as authorities continue to track down the suspect matching that composite sketch that was released just days after Ladano's death. Former FBI profiler Brad Garrett though says that this suspect could be difficult to track down. The disadvantage to people like this is they're not talking to anybody. He's now he's not in the bar blabbing about what he did. You know, he's probably a guy that stays within himself, walks around, may even work in the city of Alexandria, and he goes on these rampages, then he goes back into his normal life. Now, while the police chief said he doesn't want to create a sense of hysteria in this community, he did once again urge residents to be aware of their surroundings and also to know who might be coming to and from their home. This as this investigation continues reporting live in Alexandria, Brianne Carter, ABC 7 News. All right, Brianne, thank you. 536 now and the crisis in Ukraine could change President Obama's weekend plans. He may be headed back to the White House instead of staying in Florida. Russian President Vladimir Putin Putin continues to brush off President Obama's warnings about Russia's presence in Ukraine. The two leaders spoke on the phone for an hour. Putin says he has an obligation to protect ethnic Russians in the Crimean region. President Obama ordered a travel ban. The U.S. also sent fighter jets to that region. We have some uh, school news to pass along to you this morning. Stafford County schools are on a two hour delay. So as of right now, that's the only one that we have, but you do have an extra uh, two hours to try and get into school this morning. Everyone in Stafford County now at 537 an Amber Alert in Maryland now expands to another state where else police are looking for a little girl feared to be in danger while she's with her father. And speaking of school delays and weather, Jackie and Eileen are tracking a storm system that's threatening to move into part of our area. They'll have the very latest when weather and traffic are up next.